So what's life like down on the farm these days? It was nice. It was good. It felt like football practice, right? And warm weather, humidity, right out there with nothing but uh, grass as far as you can see, farm animals out there. That's how, that's how football camp's supposed to be. That's how it's been done here a long time. Glad we got to do it. What's kind of the, you know, your thought process you know, behind now that you've been out there and kind of experienced yourself? I mean, do you, do you see the attraction to that that other coaches and players have had, and what do you like about it? Well, we got a great facility here. Obviously. I mean, we have an abundance of space, so it's not like we need to go there for space. Obviously, part of it is it helps save your grass a little bit, right? You don't you don't tear up your fields because you know you're going to be on them, you know, for the next four months straight, almost every single day. So that's that's one benefit. But it's good to get away, get a change of scenery. I, it's kind of nice to go where you don't have all the luxuries and conveniences that you have, obviously, in our facility here. Kind of, kind of takes a lot of guys, hopefully, back to like what high school football was like for them. You know, I mean, I drive around this state, recruiting all small towns, you, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of practice fields that patches of grass, dirt. Don't always have to be the prettiest thing, but some of the best football players in the country play on there. Uh, so. Hopefully, it reminds them of reminds them of that a little bit. How, how would the farm practice facility compare to your first college practice facility? Um, oh, farm's nice. Farm's <laughs> nice. I don't know. I mean, New Mexico. I, New Mexico is a pretty big state with not many people, so you got you got an abundance of space there too. You talk the football. The football's not as good. Not as good athletes on the field, though. I'm gonna let you know right now. You talked in the past of you know wanting the best eleven guys on the field and you know being willing to work schemes around what you felt, you know, would fit some of the players best. Have you on the flip side seen players maybe, you know, learn some new things, pick up new stuff and, and seeing the willingness from them to kind of change maybe what they're comfortable with to, to provide, you know, maybe a better product and, and help, you know, pull up some wins? Oh, yeah. I mean, we got some guys, you know, we got some guys playing new positions, right? We're trying to find a way, uh, fastest way to get them on the field, right? You know, so, you know, Marcus Banks, Speed is playing safety. Uh, Don Terry Russell went from defensive end to Sam linebacker. Now we can always play him at some defensive end roles. Uh, you know, obviously Antonio Harmon playing tight end, right? So you got guys obviously moving new positions. And then, yeah, anytime you're, uh, well, for instance, what we're doing offensively, right? When you start getting into those heavier personnel sets, if we stay in our base defense, well, that forces a lot of DBs to have to come down close to the line of scrimmage and, and fill gaps and support the run, uh, which they probably don't, they don't have as many reps of doing that, right? Uh, and so that forces you to, improve your skill set, right? Along those lines, I kind of talked to you back in the summer about your offensive line going from not being on their heels as much back to pass pro to be more balanced and, and get in the zone blocking and all that. How have you seen that group adjust to that as far as the blocking assignments? I think I've done a really good job of, of being locked in in meetings, coming out and trying to execute what they're being taught. Right? We need more carryover from individual work to team periods. Uh, in reality, right, we just finished day six of camp. Uh, typically early on, I think the defense always has an advantage, right, because as long as you can just come off the ball hard and go hard on defense, even if you're not necessarily in the right space, you know, it takes, it takes a day or two for an offensive line, particularly in protection, to get used to, you know, setting firm inside, uh, holding up to those rushes. And so I thought we looked better today on the offensive line. Obviously, we need to progress every single day. Just like we do on the defensive line, but we got to get, I mean, we got to get better up front for us to, how to do what we're doing. How much is their experience? You got some PS six year guys up front. How much does that experience help them with that transition? Oh, I, th I mean, I think it helps, right? I mean, hey, pass protection is pass protection, right? So, and if you've you faced the defensive fronts that you're going to face week in, week in and week out in this league, I mean, you know what you're getting ready for, right? So, and when you played a lot of football, you know, you kind of pick up on it or things come easier because defense is going up so many different ways with 11 guys. And so uh, I don't think we're having any trouble picking up the schemes, no. How do you feel like maybe the team conditioned this summer? I mean, how, how prepared do you feel like they are for preseason camp? I think it's been good. You know, I think every coach's biggest fear is obviously that first week. You know, you usually finish, you have some hard, hard days at the end of summer conditioning kind of, hey, we're going to test where we're at. And then the guys get a certain number of days off, usually before training camp starts. And usually your biggest fear is you lose a guy to a hamstring or some sort of growing pool or something. And then, you know, you miss a week's worth of practice. So you only get 25 and you get you miss seven of them with a guy. Uh, and fortunately for us, we haven't lost a single guy to any type of, you know, soft tissue pool or anything like that. Obviously, uh, cross my fingers now after saying that. But uh, 
that obviously means we showed up in shape and ready to go. And so I think they did a good job of attacking the summer and, and then coming out and working themselves into football shape. Have you seen intensity, competitiveness kind of pick up now a few days with, you know, having pads on? Well, pads always do that, obviously. I mean, every, every school across the country, right, once you put the pads on, kind of inherently picks up the intensity or you don't find yourself out on the practice field very much for reps. <laughs> what about safety at this point? I know it's too early in camp, but th what, what are you seeing from that group? Yeah, moving a lot of guys around, obviously got to get reps. Uh, I'll probably say right now, you know, Kobe Albert, uh, Marcus Banks, we're probably the two guys from a consistency standpoint every day uh, that I've been most pleased with, you know, and who have flashed the most. Obviously, I, I'm, I've been pretty open about it. I have concerns about what we're trying to, re the number of snaps we're replacing at safety, the experience we're replacing within the defense. And so those two guys, uh, you know, I, I like how they're progressing. And then we got an open competition between, you know, Sean Preston, um, Jordan Morant, Isaac Smith's getting thrown in there. Corey Ellington's obviously getting a whole bunch of snaps. Uh, and so we're rotating a whole bunch of guys. We were watching practice yesterday with the contact going on. And yes, your, your safeties tend to backs play physical. But it looks like the receivers are giving some pretty physical play out there as well, whether it's blocking or taking contact downfield. Yeah, I mean, our receiver group is, is very talented, right? I mean, you look at Justin Robinson, how big and strong he is. Uh, Xavion, I, I used a clip of Xavion stock blocking as the kind of textbook block I'd like to see from every guy in our program in terms of fitting up on a guy, driving his feet through contact. Uh, Tulu's obviously played a whole bunch of football, Wally, and so, yeah, I think those guys, again, you know, if you're a receiver, you want the ball thrown to you, well, you also do your part in a run game, right? Mm -hmm. You make contested catches, which are a lot of times physical catches because you're going to face a lot of tight coverage. There's going to be a guy draped all over you, and you're either big and strong enough physical enough to come down with it, and the quarterback keeps feeding you, or, or you don't, or you drop it, and then he typically looks to go somewhere else with the football. Your early impressions, and I know he got here in the spring, Jeffrey Pittman, but just kind of your impressions of him so far. Obviously, a, a hardworking guy came from Juco ranks and uh, kind, of, kind of built for this mentality. Yeah, I think I, you know, just like you said, Pitt, you know, Pitt kind of fits the mold here. Uh, on special teams, he's really jumped out, right? That's one thing I probably hadn't talked enough. A lot of these guys is the, the buy-in and commitment to in special teams, too. So Pitt will play a lot of snaps for us there. Obviously, he's going to get carries, too. You know, that running back group, it's almost – there's some different different thicknesses, maybe different speeds slightly or different strengths. But it all, all in all, they almost look like there's about four of the same guys running out there. You know, you sub – you sum one guy out, the next guy in is coming out. It's about the exact same height. It might be five or ten pounds heavier or lighter, but it almost looks like we got four really similar guys in that group. How would you kind of assess the tight ends group at this point? Oh, well, it's obviously mean, it's a work in progress. I mean, we got we got plenty of guys out there getting reps. Uh, obviously, if you're going to play tight end in the run game, you got to be able to hold up at the point of attack and create some movement uh, against some big, strong, physical dudes, and then you got to be able to do some things in the pass game. I have been a little disappointed. Uh, we've dropped some balls, both in, in the tight end and receiver group, passes you can't drop. Right? When, you're, when you're sitting in zone coverage and you got, it's not a contested catch, and the put, quarterback puts the ball in, you got to come down with that ball 100% of the time, 100% of the time. And so uh, a little disappointed with some of the drops that have occurred in the last couple of days. You know, usually you're, that's your concern that guys are worried about where the contact might be coming from. That or it's a lack of concentration, looking to get upfield and taking your eye off the ball. Uh, but going back specifically to tight ends, you know, between Rylan Gody, Spivey, Jacarius Clayton. Uh, I mean, we got the body types you want in there. We got the, we got the guys you want, so we just got to keep developing every day. Coach, you mentioned uh, a lot about, or uh, just previously, about having to replace a lot of snaps on the uh, safety position <laughs> secondary. Do you think that the depth um, of that position right now, do you think it's enough once the actual season starts getting going, just the, um, uh, to be able to replace something, uh, you know, as many snaps as you guys end up losing? Right now, today, no, no. Right? We're not consistent enough. Uh, you know, you take all three starting safeties, who are all fourth or fifth year guys playing college football last year, and Emmanuel Forbes, who's a 16th pick of the draft. You have four guys you're replacing. Uh, right now, no, we, we we're not ready to play near at that level. And so, we got today was day six. We got 19 practices left before the first game. Uh, we got a lot of work to do.